I'm like, yo, Jeff, yo, Jeff, I just got jumped, B. I need your help, man. I'm down a thousand dollars. What the fuck we gonna do? And Jeff just nonchalantly says, oh, that's easy. You gotta rob somebody. Hey, welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. You know my kids love birthday parties? They appreciate the simple things. Ice cream, toys, candy, clowns. Even some one day of the year, you can have a cupcake, a pizza, a hot dog, and soda all at the same time. And the only thing you're left with is an afternoon of innocent fun. Be a kid again. Suck it, Roy. I love his podcast, Scoops and Stages. He is Gaston Almonte. I'm from East New York, Brooklyn. There's a lot of lies here. It's so, <laughs> so no way, no way, never. I've gotten like a cheer for that once. And it was in East New York, Brooklyn. <laughs> You know, we make them different over there. You know, my father's from there, I'm from there. You know, you, you become a hustler, you smooth, you do work to make money, you know? I'll give you an example. Last month, cops knocked on my door, they spoke to me and my wife. They're like, hey, um, you know about any stolen appliances getting delivered to your house? Apparently somebody went to Sears, bought a ton of refrigerators, stoves, ovens, got it delivered to my backyard, never paid for that shit. So I thought of my dad. I was like, yo, Pops, you know about any stolen appliances getting delivered to my house last week? And he's like, last week? Nah. He's <laughs> a special guy. No. But I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be this level of smooth, just cold, you know? Tough under pressure like that. He had other plans, though. You know, when I was 13, I got into this prep school in Queens, St. Francis Prep, and he was real excited because, you know, somebody from the hood was going to make it. You know, Bellator, the UFC, I'm crossing over. <laughs> but I was concerned, you know. Kids at prep, they wore khaki pants and polos. I got to ride the J train and that shit. I'm not going to be tough. <laughs> so I asked my dad, I said, like, yo, Pops, I'm a little worried about my street cred going to the school. People don't think I'm soft now. And he's like, Gastor, being tough got nothing to do with what you wear, where you go to school. It's about being responsible, handling your business. You know what you need? You need a job. And I don't know if you guys know much about the employment market for 13-year-olds. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> no. So we had to convince my mom, you know, to get a gig. So we decided, you know, I'd work with my dad. My mom wasn't too thrilled with the idea, but this is what we told her so she could ride along with it. I was gonna be the vending machine operator. I was gonna go there, fill up the machine with juices, sodas, and I could keep the profits from the machine. She was happy. What my job actually was, was to go to the laundromat and take all the cash and deposit it at the bank. Because it occurred to my dad, yo, this is a cash business. I gotta take out money every day. This is East New York, Brooklyn. That's dangerous. Why should I risk my life? <laughs> I got a perfectly healthy 13-year-old boy. <laughs> Put him to use, you know? Now, to pull this off, we had to do a few things. One, we decided we should pretend that I'm actually not his son. I was just a random vending machine operator. It's cool, because this meant that I could just talk to him like a regular dude. It's a superpower. <laughs> I walked in the first day. Oh, what's going on, Leo? How you doing, man? What you getting into this weekend? Oh, me? Oh, I got into some pussy, yo. <laughs> he had to eat that, like, just take it, you know? <laughs> it's amazing. So I go downstairs to get the sodas, and there would be two envelopes. It was one with the cash that I had to deposit, and my money for the day. Laundry mat only been open one day, so I'm expecting, you know, a couple bucks from me and maybe a thousand dollars of business. There was twelve thousand dollars in cash. I didn't come prepared. Now, thankfully, I'd been going to this prep school for a few weeks, and the white kids at the school put me onto the wonderful world of cargo pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
So I proceeded to use the various storage options available to me. <laughs> Come upstairs, I see my daddy taps his hip to remind me of the second benefit of this job. I got a beeper. I know you're impressed. <laughs> It's amazing, see, because you guys don't realize this now. Like, beepers was just the shit back then. I remember telling my friends in Brooklyn, yo, when y'all cut class, make sure y'all page me. <laughs> and like, yo, we ain't got shit to tell you, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I want people to know I got shit going on. <laughs> so, I start my walk. Side note, by the way. I learned something during this walk to the bank. Something you could take home with you. If you ever have a confidence issue, maybe you got an interview coming up, gonna propose to your missus, whatever you decide, and you lacking something inside. You should try walking around with $12,000 in cash in your pocket. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> you, know? you have no, I felt like Jay-Z that whole walk, <laughs> you know? Is, oh man, and I bumped into my boy Jeff, He's like, yo, Gaston, what you getting into today? I'm like, man, you know, running these streets. <laughs> you know how I do. So he's like, yo, we should go get a slice. I'm like, all right, cool, you know? What else would you do with $12,000? <laughs> you know? So we go to my boy Vito on Essex. He pays for his slice. I pull out a wad of $1,000. <laughs> I pay for my slice. <laughs> Jeff gets very excited. <laughs> he looks at me holding it. She's like, oh shit. Yo, gas store is doing it. Runs to the payphone, calls up everybody. <laughs> you know, now as an adult, I'm responsible. Now I got a mortgage, I got a wife, I got kids. I got shit going on. I still dream of being a rapper. I want to buy out the bar. It looks fun to pour liquor on people and shit, you know? <laughs> I know it's fun, because I got to live that as a 13-year-old at a pizzeria. <laughs> it's amazing. You who's and snap who's on me, I got this. <laughs> pizza, any topping. You got no idea what the fuck they will put on a pizza if you ask anything, anything. It's possible, you dream. Y'all put wood on pizza, I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Do it, cook another one. Frivolous shit. Now I got to do this baller move while sitting at the table with my people. My people went off. I said, yo, pardon me, I gotta take this. Go to the phone, call back the number, it's my dad. He's like, yo, how'd the deposit go? My friends are watching. So I'm like, man, I get to it when I get to it. <laughs> Dog life. He's like, yo, um, I know we got this whole charade going on at the laundromat, but you're still my son, and you actually have $12,000. <laughs> when are you making a deposit? I'm like, I said I get to it when I get to it. <laughs> Hung up the phone. Legendary. <laughs> You'll hear about it. <laughs> go back to the table, chop it up for another 20 minutes. Go to the counter, drop $100 for Vito, keep the change. Walk out like a G. I make it another block under the J train on Fulton, and six dudes walk up to me. Hey, don't get ahead of me. <laughs> and the dude in the middle hits me straight on the chest. And he's like, yo, you gassed her? I'm like, yeah, who wants to know? He's like, well, we heard you was doing it real big out here. And I'm like, oh yeah, if you want some pizza, I left a ton of shit, <laughs> you know, go help yourself. He's like, nah, man, we heard you was doing it real big. Now we want to do it real big too. And they jumped me on Fulton, for real. Six deep, thanks to that dude Chad at Old Navy, I had the cargo pants on. <laughs> 
they only got to one of my pockets. <laughs> so I lost the rest of that stack. I lost $1,000. I'm bloody. I run back to the pizzeria. Jeff is on a stupor from six slices. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Jeff, yo, Jeff, I just got jumped, B. I need your help, man. I'm down to $1,000. What the fuck we going to do? And Jeff just nonchalantly says, oh, that's easy. We got to rob somebody. <laughs> Logical East New York decisions. <laughs> so we decided to rob the local drug dealers on Jerome Street. Because it's a one-way street, right? They got a trash can in the middle of the block with a Jansport bag with the day's cash. One dude on one corner, you give him the money. Dude on the other corner gives you the product. Simple operation. So we came up with the idea to drive against traffic, hop out the car, get the bag, and drive off. So we go to my dad's house, get some ski mask on, hoodies, and we take my dad's car. Drive down the block, I jump into the trash can, I grab the bag. Now we drive off, I'm looking in the rear view mirror, I see the drug dealers just looking confused. But they ain't do shit, we got away with it. Against traffic, shit worked. <laughs> we drove straight to the bank and made the most gangster deposit ever. <laughs> right into the Wamu. Rocking a ski mask. <laughs> Run right up to the teller, and I'm just trying to throw shit at the counter. And the security guard walks over. He's like, what you doing? I'm like, man, I'm bringing money into the motherfucker. We're good. He looks at me confused. Jeff jumps in. Nah, he's cool. We go to prep. You see, he got cargo pants on. <laughs> So I make my deposit, I get home, pull this shit off, I feel relaxed. My dad comes in from lunch, and he's like, yo, Gaston, how'd that deposit go? I'm like, yeah, everything went great, Pops. He's like, nah, like, tell me, how did the deposit go? How was the process? I'm like, I said, everything went fine, everything was cool. And he's like, Gaston, those were my friends that jumped you. Stop fucking with my money. Here's the rest of the cash he took from you. Go make that deposit. We'll talk about this when I'm done for the day. So I go to my room. I call Jeff. Yo, Jeff, we got a problem. Those are my dad's friends that robbed me. I didn't need $1,000. So he's like, so we got $1,000. No, Jeff, we have angry drug dealers. Jeff. <laughs> so we decided to do what I like to call a reverse drive-by. <laughs> Got the ski mask back on. Stole my dad's car again. We drove down Jerome Street, lowered the window, throw the Jansport bag out, and we yell out, my bad, yo. <laughs> Drove off. <laughs> Happy day. Uh, I show up for work the next morning. You know, I go downstairs, get the sodas for the day. I see the envelope for the deposit. I don't see my money. So I come upstairs. I'm like, yo, Leo. I see the deposit money. Where, where's my cash? And he's like, oh, you mean the money that I needed to smooth things over with the drug dealers on Jerome Street? Turns out, the reason my dad's laundromat had $12,000 the first day of business is because my dad's a local loan shark. Um, some of his biggest clients happen to be on Jerome Street. Um, so he's like, yeah, so I don't care that you did something stupid, but if you're gonna do something stupid, do it smart. For example, when you rob local drug dealers, Try not to do so in the car that the local loan shark uses to drop off their money. <laughs> Lesson learned. 
like to think I'm a little more responsible now. I'm an adult. I was trying to buy a uh, home when I got married. Had my kid on the way, you know? So I talked to my dad. I had money saved, but I had enough to buy a home that I wanted. And he smirks, comes back from his office, and he hands me a checking book. It's under my name. And I'm like, what's this? He's like, Gastor, I'm real proud of the man you are. You have good character, you're tough, and you do things that I can't do, and you avoided doing the things that I had to do, and I'm real proud of you for that. But in order to get you here, it cost me a lot. Like actual money, it cost me a lot. <laughs> so every time you did something stupid, you know, break a window, playing baseball, steal my car and wreck it, or rob local drug dealers. <laughs> I put the money that it cost me to fix that problem, and I put the same amount of money into this account. $83,200. <laughs> and that's the money I used to make the first down payment on my house. You know? So when people ask me, can you raise a good kid in East New York, Brooklyn? I say, yeah. All it takes is patience, love, and a spare $80,000. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, girl, Monte, everybody. Woo.